This is a very special episode. I'm having one of my first guests on the show and we have a great conversation. This special guest, you already know her very well. She's extremely helpful in Facebook group Gardening in Chandler. And she is none other than Lavanya Dantuluri. Welcome you all to Somi's Chai and Chat. I'm your host, Saumya. The intention of this podcast is to learn, share and grow. The curiosity child in me wants to talk to people who are helping and uh, growing our communities and also at the same time fighting those inner fears. We have great conversation lined up and I'm very honored to be talking to Lavanya about this very thing she enjoys doing and also sharing Stay tuned. Hey, Lavanya, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Somia. How are you doing? I'm doing good too, Lavanya. Thank you so much. Welcome to Somi's Chai and Chat. And thank you so much for being my very first guest on this show. Thank you so much for making me your first guest. And yeah, congratulations and I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move right into it. So Lavanya, you work full time. You have two kids, a little older kids. You are an art teacher who have more than 30 kids who come to learn art from you. And you have this beautiful garden which you maintain very well and also help people in the group gardening in Chandler answer their questions and save a lot of plants. How did it all start? Gardening almost started as a novelty thing. Like, hey, I see a jasmine plant which grows back home in India. Maybe I should try growing one. Hey, I see a mango plant. Maybe I should try growing one. I don't think I ever had the perception or the drive to become a gardener. Or at least that's not something I planned for. But it started with smaller things. And uh, I think over time, I just got hooked to it. Um, Obviously, it was not easy. And we come from a very hostile weather where the summer is six to eight months long, uh, considering uh, the heat sometimes is over 115 degrees for a couple of days, which is very harsh on plants. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, plants that survive the heat, do not like the cold, and we have a few days of um, the freeze, which takes a toll on it. So I think the first few years were always a hit or a miss or a complete uh, loss of Um, killing your plants and your time and everything but at the end it always seemed like a little more of learning okay if you have to do this you need to do it better in a different uh, mindset and better preparation things like that so over time it became a process of evolving as a I wouldn't say even a gardener at least just as a simple house owner right you want to just keep a few plants alive and then I came across one or two other people who were in the same boat as me who knew much much less than I did but then we met a third person who was a little more uh, advanced and has done a lot of research and has been successful in some things so he said hey the only way I can get all of us to share these ideas is if we have this small group um, at least to begin with where we can share ideas because most people once they fail they give up Um, whereas the others will try again and again and try to kind of perfect uh, the survival technique for Arizona. What do you actually need? What kind of soil? Because there are a lot of external things you need to buy and amend your soil and uh, location-wise, how do you plan the sun exposure and things like that. There's a lot that goes into raising plants here. So that's how we started with five people in the group. Mm. I think now we have around 2,500 people in the gardening group. I will not take any credit saying that I'm an expert. I still think I'm a novice and I always think 
every year I learn. Sometimes I feel I've learned and then I'm like, uh, I think what I learned is also proven false the next year. So it's a constant process of understanding the climate you're in, the microclimate and also the plants and the ecosystem and everything. Uh, there is a lot to it. So you can never pinpoint gardening all the way just down to that one small factor. There are many small factors that um, help you with the success or with the failure. So the, over time, what I realized is once uh, the conversation started, a lot of people who started gardening their garden afresh from, fresh from scratch, mm -hmm. we were able to help, uh, help them pick plants which were more fruit uh, based mm -hmm. rather than purely ornamental that you spend a lot of water and trimming and all the costs. And uh, trees like peaches, apricots and a lot of stone fruit do really well in this weather with much less care. So in some sort, somewhere during this whole process, it became a drive or a mission to kind of help people accomplish uh, more uh, edible gardening mm -hmm. to help them uh, this. And uh, how do you minimize usage of water? You know, when the plants go dormant, you really don't need to water these trees. They can stay without water for right. a couple of months. Right. But uh, when do they, when uh, they are in the fruiting and flowering stage, they do need water. So. All this has been a learning process from fellow gardeners and uh, over time I think this community was all about like a uh, what you say like a closed loop circuit where you constantly learn and uh, I think now at least we have inspired a lot more people to try growing um, a lot of fru fruits and vegetables Obviously, the produce that comes out of your garden is far more tastier than the ones you buy from store. Although you don't have it year round, I think its nutritional value is far far more than the ones you buy from store because of the shelf life, the handling, you're not spraying any wax or any kind of chemicals. And we have been successful without spraying any chemicals on our plants for about six, six and a half years. So my overall gardening experience is about 14 years. 14 years, whoa! I've seen people who will just start uh, hit the ground running and they're probably far more successful in doing a lot of things that I fail at. Mm -hmm. I still fail at a lot of things and I hope someday I'll be successful. And uh, But still there are no regrets in this. I mean, it takes a lot of effort, um, definitely rewarding. And I think over years of being uh, surrounded by plants, this is one thing I cannot see myself away from. And uh, yes, like I had the outdoor garden, I started bringing plants inside and uh, I don't know when that became an obsession, but over time yeah. I'm surrounded by plants in almost every room that gets a reasonable amount of sunlight. I do keep plants because I feel we spend so much time indoors and uh, our eyes need to break away from all the artificial things and we breathe in a lot of toxins um, coming from the carpet and a lot of the you know fire retardant and all these solutions that are sprayed into the house. Um, I think plants are a good way to um, bring you back that connection with nature. Mm -hmm. And the simplest way, there are a lot of plants which do not cost much. You can just ask a friend for a cutting and start with small. Yeah. Uh, with it small. So the biggest plant you see here is about nine years old. Obviously it covers an entire wall, so it feels like there are many, many plants. Um, yeah, and I have a bunch of different varieties of pothos. All it needs is some sunshine, some water and soil and a little bit of maintenance and they do fine. So you want to find plants which are good for your um, climatic conditions and not stress yourself about going for the really exotic ones which are not meant to be in the <laughs> desert. Um, but I've enjoyed them for years and I think the others who have come to my house just like you have, have started to grow a little bit of fondness towards uh, um, how much peace they find in the room coming in yes. just into this place as a I think humans were always Very deeply connected with nature and we just kind of broke away from that uh, With all the media and everything and we think the life is indoors yeah. <laughs> So this yeah. kind of again pulls you in the direction um, It's very therapeutic. That's what I feel to me Lavanya whenever I enter your house It is like a botanical garden inside a temple with all the calming my sense organs and then telling me to relax and chill, life is good. <laughs> That's the feeling I get.
Hope you enjoyed this episode. Next episode, we will continue our conversation with Lavanya. More on indoor gardening, outdoor gardening, and few tips to grow indoor plants for beginners. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.